right inside the lines. So, as per usual, I'm not starting a project until super late at night. So, that's what I guess. So this is the shop that Gary works at, and I just they're just nice enough to let me use it. So that's cool. So so now that we got our black and our white laminates. Laminates? Sure. Now that we have them, we're gonna go burn. Them. Oh, but first first let's take a look. Take a look at Brock here. He uh he's doing way more than what he signed up for. Boom man, boom man. cameraman. Boom man, boom man. The boy can do it all. Can do it all. <laughs> okay. So anyways. No, we'll do this over here. So, in the dark room, it has like a little UV light, or like a UV shield. That's why it's all yellow, and that help. That makes it so the emulsion on the screen doesn't cure until I put it on this light box. So I put the laminate down. I like taping mine down and then lining up with some tape that I have. That blue tape on the on the glass there. And then you lock it down. Turn on the power, let the vacuum hold that down, and turn on the light. So, while that's burning, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make that scratch on me. Okay, so, geez. On the last video when I was working on the pillway stickers, someone told me to add dish soap. So, I tried it, and it works incredibly. So, thank you, you, whoever posted that in the comments. Thanks. So I have all these, and we just need to add some dish soap. Oh, so like in the video before, I, I wanted to see how well the Classicel ink worked on the stickers and how they, well they held up, and it's been fabulous. Also, I guess I'm a pop socket guy now, so that's something. So I just added as much soap as I could in the bottle without overfilling it, and we'll see how that goes. Now we got that done, let's test it out. It's white. Whee! When I tested it out, uh, I don't know if I put enough soap in there or not, or maybe too much, I don't know. So, to get these to dry faster, I have to throw them under the flash dryer, and when I'm printing the stickers, I'm gonna have to do this in between each print. The socks don't match. Couldn't find matching socks. Yeah, that should be dry. So the blacks and the blues seem to scratch off the easiest. Ooh, the really good. We're gonna take the screen out and rinse it. So the light box cures the ink everywhere except for the images. So then you can wash out all the uncured emulsion and it leaves a little stencil for you to print. I have a video where I kind of do like the DIY of this, and I'll put a link to that here. We're just going to power wash out. And it's super noisy, so I thought it would be funny if I talked and explained stuff. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Basically, you're just washing out all the uncured emulsion. And I held up to the light to make sure I wasn't missing any spots. So to make that second screen, I put that laminate right on top of the old one, put some new tape down, pull the old laminate out, then line up the second screen right where I had the first one. That way, they'll be about the same when I'm trying to line them up. I didn't think of anything to do while that was burning, so just waited for it to be done. Cool. Nice. There you can kind of see the emulsion washing out better. Got the screen all. Not the screen, I got the I got the lens all wet. This is gonna be a really hard print. You can see like how little bit of space. I only have like two fingers here and here. Usually you want about four fingers. 
And I would have done this on, done this on four screens, but I only had the two for now that were ready. So we're just gonna make it work. Let's let it dry. Let's move all this. Now the screens are dry. Okay, now we just need to do the same thing with the other one. All right, now that we got the screens taped, let's go. Ooh. So the first thing I do is I get them roughly lined up with the laminate. And sometimes it's just, it's like a troubleshoot, like maybe these burnt the screen wrong, but I was good. So I, I got that tightened in. And I then tape off the part of the screen that I wasn't gonna be printing. So I'm not doing those eyeballs yet. First, I'm gonna do the goopy triangles. So I did a test print on a t-shirt. Oh, and also because I'm working with water-based paint, you have to back flood it like I did right here. But anyways, so I did that first print on a t-shirt, and then I can line up the second screen to that. That way, it should be lined up every time I print. So, we'll test that out. I'm gonna do that first base with this light blue. And then I'm gonna print the black on top. And while I'm letting that one dry, I just slid it over and did another print. Let that one dry. Flip over to another print. And this press has four heads on it. So I was able to do that four times. And then by the time it came back over to me, it was dry. So I could do the black. But, but the paint still dried in the screen. So I had to come back with a spray bottle, try to wash out as much paint as I could. Do it on the front. And okay. Now it's working. And they look, they look all right. Hopefully, yeah, they look good. I'm hoping this works because when I throw it under the heater, it seems like the paint's like adhering to the vinyl so it doesn't scratch off. So then I started trying to let it air dry, but when I was doing that, then the paint was drying in the screen. So it was a big mess. I've kind of got it down now, but because it's such like thin lines, what I've had to do is when I'm not pretty, I'm gonna flood it. Like after the back flood, and let that heat sit on top of the design so that it doesn't dry inside the lines. I started running out of the blue paint and I had to start kind of experimenting. I had that yellow paint and the pink paint and even though it didn't like scratch off as well, I thought maybe I could mix them, maybe do like a marble effect, we'll see. So I got all those ones done, now I just need to do the eyeballs right here. And those are just done with the Plasticel ink. So I have to cure them and throw them through the dryer. Unlike the other ones, I just let air dry. Ooh, it was probably like four in the morning now, so. So we we got it done, and it's only oh it's it's, it's only six it's only six o'clock in the morning. So I'm gonna go to bed, and 
we'll just, and I guess we'll check out those stickers in the morning, tomorrow sometime. So, cool. Well, I ended up sleeping in till like three in the afternoon, but I was able to make it to my favorite pizza place in Salt Lake, it's called the Pie Hole. And it's really cool, like, so they just have like the pizza sitting out and then they throw it in the oven. They have like way good stuff. I got the salami mango brown sugar jalapeno one. It was so good. Yeah, that boy. And... Is there a glass? I don't know where you're looking for. So, the cool thing about the pie hole is there's just like graffiti everywhere. All over the walls, all over the drinking fountain. And so, I just thought I'd add some of the stickers up of my own. Even in the bathroom. So, yeah, and then just hopefully next time I can come, maybe they'll like have peeled off. It's a kind of experiment to see how, how long that will stay, how long it will stay unpeeled I guess, we'll see. So the idea was to have a sticker that you could like put one layer down, put this top layer on top and that would peel off or scratch off. But a lot wouldn't scratch off unless I added water. So the ones that I put outside are definitely going to scratch off a lot quicker. But yeah. I thought it looked pretty cool. Maybe I'll put it on a skateboard and have that like scratch off as I ride it. So originally I was going to give away these stickers as a reward for the first month who anyone signed up for my Patreon. But because it took me so long to make this video, I've decided I'm going to extend it till the end of April. So if you want one, you can go snag one on my Patreon. I'll, I'll put a link in the top right corner for any of you guys who want to try this out yourself. I'll also have a link to my Patreon in the description. And yeah, that'd be cool. Like, do you really love pizza? I can't tell. More ravenous now. No, ravenous. Rav Do you know what ravenous means? Like really like shake your head around while you bite. But do I need to do it for you? Okay, get this. I don't really want you to get this on film. I'm ready. Oh, you're getting it on film. That's ravenous.